A math class has five exams for the semester. One student scored 73, 81, 70, 85, and 76 on his exams. Find the standard deviation. So in finding the standard deviation, the first thing we want to do is find deviation from the mean. So I guess that means we should find the mean. So the mean of this data is going to be when we add everything up and then divide by the number of exams, which is 5. So 73 plus 81 plus 70 plus 85 plus 76 divided by 5. So we get 385 divided by 5. So he averages about 77 on his test. So now we're going to figure out what's the deviation. So I think the best way to do this is to set up a table. We're going to have three columns. So on the left side, we're going to put the score. In the next column, we're going to find the deviation. So in the first column, we're going to put all of our scores. And then in the second one, we're going to find the deviation from 77. So just subtract them. So 73 minus 77, 81 minus 77, and so on. Just figuring out how we deviate from the mean. So 73 minus 77 is going to be negative 4. 81 minus 77 is positive 4. 70 minus 77 is negative 7. 85 minus 77 is 8. And 76 minus 77 is negative 1. So the next thing we're going to do to find the standard deviation is we want to get positive parts of the deviation. So what we're going to do is square. So we're going to do the squared deviation. So we're going to square all of these numbers. So negative 4, we're going to square that. 4 squared, negative 7 squared, 8 squared, and negative 1 squared. So anytime you square a number, it's always going to be positive. That's the whole point of what we're doing. We'll undo the square in the very last step, just as a side note. So negative 4 squared is 16. And then we get another 16, 49, 64, and 1. So essentially what we're going to do now is take the average of all of these squared deviations. So we're going to add all of these up. So 16 plus 16 plus 49 plus 64 plus 1. So 146. Now you would say, well, then just divide by 5. But one thing we have to keep in mind, anytime you're figuring out standard deviation, we have to figure out is this a sample or is it a population. So in rereading this question, it says that the math class has five exams. This is all five of them. So we have every single part. So this is going to be a population standard deviation. So with a population standard deviation, we're literally just going to take the average of the squared deviation. So we're going to do 146 divided by the number of values, which is 5. If you were doing a sample standard deviation, you wouldn't divide by 5, you would do 5 minus 1. Okay, because we, it's a little bit off, so we have to modify it a little bit. So dividing that out, 146 divided by 5, this average is 29.2. So to find the standard deviation of the population, we use this Greek notation called sigma. This is going to equal, remember how we squared everything? Now we're going to undo what we did, so we're going to take the square root of the 29.2. So we get about 5.4. Okay, 
Okay, so let's say you wanted to check this answer to see if it was right. Let me show you how you can put this in a calculator. Let me show you the one I've been using. So the TI30XS, I think is one of the easier ones to use. So the first thing you want to do is put on put in all the data. So you're going to literally hit the button that says data. You're going to type everything in. So you got 73, 81, 70, 85, and 76. So once you put in all the data, now you're going to calculate it. So we're going to go into second data and hit stat. And this was one set of uh, exams, so one variable, enter. So my data is in list one, so I'm going to go down to calculate. And then scroll down a little bit, you're going to find two types of standard deviations. The first one for S is called the sample. The second one is called sigma, which is population. That's what we were finding, which is about 5.4. And there it is. Okay, let's say you have a different kind of calculator. Let me just show you how to put the data in real quick. Let's say you have a TI30X2. A little bit different, you still want to put in the data, but the first thing you have to do is activate the stat mode. A lot of scientific calculators are like that. So above the data, you'll see in blue that it says stat. So you're going to hit second data, and you're going to say one variable. So now at this point, it should say STAT on your calculator. So then you're going to hit data. Now you can put the data in. So X1 was 73. And then these arrows that are on the right side indicate that you need to use the arrows to go to the next number. So when you scroll down, it's going to ask for the frequency. So if you happen to have 273, she would say 2. We only have 1, so I'm going to keep going down. So then 81, 70, 85, 76. Okay, so once you put on all of the data, the button that's right next to that one, S-T-A-T-B-A-R. So hit that, and it's going to spit everything out. Scroll over to the right. There's your sample standard deviation, and there's your population. Okay, so that's how most scientific calculators work. I'll show you one more in case you have maybe a graphing calculator. You can use the TI-84. So kind of the same idea with the uh, TI-30XS. You want to hit STAT. Okay, so what you want to do is put in the data. So we're going to edit our list. And then just type it in, so 73, 81, 70, 85, 76. Okay, hit that stat button again, and then this time you're going to go over to calculate. And there's only one list, so we'll do one variable. All the data's in list one, just go to calculate. And there's our population, our, our sample I mean, and then our population. Okay, so those are three types of calculators. Hopefully that's one that you have um, on how to figure out the standard deviation.